Rabbit's one of those mystical meats that people just kind of don't know what to do with. And I'm hoping to dispel some myths for you this evening as well as make rabbit more approachable as a meat source for your family. So of course, if you're having rabbit for dinner, first step is to grab your rabbit. I've got mine right here. I'm kidding, kinda. I'm gonna be using a recipe out of the Stephen Ranella Meat Eater Cookbook. I think there's more than one of these. This is the Fish and Game Cookbook. I'll make sure to list all of the ingredients in the description below, and then you can follow along with me in the video. Got two back legs, two front legs, the back strap portion, and don't forget the belly flaps. This is a really good cut of meat. One of the most important parts about cooking with rabbit is to remember that it is relatively fatless but you wanna make sure when you're cooking with rabbit that you are adding fat in and cooking it low and slow. Generally, you're, what you're trying to do is trap in moisture and there's no better way to do that than to sear your meat first. So that's step number one. Got some olive oil here. About two tablespoons. Medium high heat. The recipe says to make sure to salt and pepper your rabbit. We're gonna use an Old Faithful here. This is Nature's Seasonings. I'm going to salt and pepper one side of the rabbit here and then the other side once it's in the pan. Very generously. So once your oil kind of starts to jiggle and shimmy and move around a little bit on its own, that's the shimmer, that's the point I'm looking for. The oil is hot enough now to properly sear our rabbit. So I'm gonna take it seasoning side down. Being careful not to overload your pan, sear the meat for five minutes on each side. Remove the browned rabbit to a plate for now and add one chopped shallot to the pan. Feel free to add butter if the pan is too dry. Next, add a few cloves of minced garlic and saute for 30 seconds. The next step is to add our cooking wine. The recipe calls for a white wine. I don't have white wine. I've made this with sherry wine before. It's what I've got today. And I've also made it using kombucha. So if that's what you've got, use it. Deglaze that pan and add one cup of bone broth or chicken stock. And a tablespoon or so of fresh or dried tarragon. So the last add-in that we have before we return the rabbit to the pan is grainy Dijon or country style mustard. Now if you're like me and you don't keep those things on hand, you can pretend to be fancy. This is what I do. Calls for three tablespoons of mustard. I'm going to put three tablespoons of regular old yellow mustard in here. Approximately. And then I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of mustard seed. Now, when I think about it ahead of time, I will toast the mustard seeds at the onion step, but I forgot today. It's not gonna hurt anything. And there you have it, instant fancy mustard. So 
so our bubble is rolling a little bit too quickly. I've got to turn down the heat. Put on our lid and then let the rabbit simmer for one hour. In the meantime though, I've got to go pick our side salad. I remember that when I first approached my husband about raising our own meat rabbits on our homestead, he was concerned about rabbit starvation. And if you don't know about it, rabbit starvation is a condition caused by eating too much rabbit. However, it's not something we have to worry about with the way that we eat rabbit. The only way that you're going to develop the condition that we call rabbit starvation is if you only eat lean meat and nothing else. Your body can burn carbs for fuel and your body can burn fat for fuel. Your body is able to burn proteins for fuel, but really not very efficiently and not for very long. It causes your liver to dump ammonia into your blood and that's just a recipe for disaster. So don't worry about eating rabbit as part of your regular diet. As long as you're eating fats and you're eating carbs with it, leafy vegetables, anything really, your body is gonna do just fine on rabbit. Look at the size of some of these tomato volunteers that are in here. We've got a hard freeze coming in less than a week, so those volunteer tomatoes do not stand a chance. This is the simmer that we're looking to sustain for the hour cook time. After the hour is up, remove the rabbit so you can thicken the sauce. Add in about half a cup of milk or cream and a large pinch of parsley. So this is the point in the recipe where they ask you to reduce the broth down by half. I don't have any patience. And I kind of like a thicker sauce on pretty much anything. So I'm gonna turn it into essentially a gravy. I've got a quarter cup of flour, some cold bone broth, Woo. I've got our liquid boiling over here. It's on high now. Just gonna create this flour slurry, add it in and thicken things right up. Return the rabbit to the pan and turn the pieces to coat them with the sauce. You can plate them up over noodles, rice, or even potatoes. And as you'll see, the creamy mustard rabbit is even great on its own, accompanied by a fresh salad. It tastes like chicken. Mm. What do you think? No. No. Rabbit's better than chicken. In what way? Because it tastes better. How? Uh -huh. Just because? Yeah. Is it different? Different. It's different. It's different mm -hmm. than chicken. Bunnies huh? different. Bunnies don't have feathers. <laughs> Bunnies don't. So how would you describe rabbit differs? I don't know. It's a 
Like it's not too dissimilar from chicken, but it just it doesn't have the same thing flavor. For me, it's a texture thing. I always describe rabbit as a closer texture. It's like the muscle fibers are thinner and closer together, but they're not more dense. In fact, rabbit is a softer meat if it's been cooked properly, I think. Mm -hmm. And you don't, especially if you cook it properly, you don't have those large tendony, um, chewy bits that you can get in chicken. It's more like chicken than anything else, but I like to compare it to a, a duck, a less greasy or non-greasy duck. Mm. And you said frog legs were like rabbit, right? Like a fishy rabbit. Frog legs were like but, a fishy rabbit. So if you've had frog legs before, you kind of understand that the texture, at least, of rabbit. I'm gonna try frog legs. Oops. So if you're wondering about this little bunny, this one we're actually selling to the farm store for pet sales, so don't worry about him.